Hi guys, welcome back into the R&D Garage here at Vintage Air. I'm Billy. Today we're going to be installing the 67 Camaro Evaporator Kit. All right, as you can see, we've already started the disassembly process on this vehicle. We're going to talk about here is the uh, firewall modification. As far as disassembly of the vehicle, you can, you can refer to your instructions that come with the kit. All right, guys, here we're going to modify our firewall so we can get our firewall cover on. All right, first, you're going to see on your vehicle that you have a lip right here at the opening. You're going to want to flatten that out, grind it, do whatever you have to do to get it nice and even. Next, we're going to enlarge these holes to a 1964 drill bit. Works pretty good. Six holes, OEM. These right here. This last one, you might have to get from inside the passenger compartment. And your next step of your modification process, what we're going to do is you're going to use this hole right here at the bottom of this opening for reference. You're going to come out roughly about half an inch to the top of this hole. You're going to drill a 5 8 no bigger than 5 8 because that's where your drain hose is going to go through and needs to be nice and tight. Alright guys, now we're going to install our defrost duct on the passenger side. What you're going to do is you're going to press your defrost duct to the opening under your dash. And using this as a template, you're gonna drill a 764 hole into the cow. We're gonna install it using a number 10 sheet metal screw. Make sure before you install your screw that you coat it with silicone so you won't have any water damage later on. Okay, on the driver's side, we're going to install the defrost duct in the same way. Same process, everything goes the same way. Any questions, check your instructions. All right, now we're going to do our modification to our factory style louvers. We're going to start by unclipping these clips on the side of the louvers to separate it from the ball inside. Remove the ball. All right. Here, what you're going to want to do is you're going to mark, mark and drill three holes. We're going to do about a quarter inch up, one there, one on each side of these clips. Using a 1 8 drill bit, go ahead and drill the three holes we've already done. All right, next we're going to apply our felt strip, supplying your kit to the beveled edge of the inner louver adapter. Next, we're going to insert our ball louver back, back into the housing, the inner, and then your outer ring. This is going to slip inside like so. You're going to want to make sure there's enough tension there so it can be adjusted, but not too loose where it flops around. Okay, next, take your pan head screws, number six. Go ahead and screw those in. And there you have it. Do the same sequence to the other side for your driver's side as you did for the passenger side and you'll be good to go. Next we're going to do our kick panel modification. You'll start with taking out your fresh air door. This is showing the final product here with everything cut off. We say remove the door just in case you want to get a better view on on your cut as you're doing it, but this is what you end up with when you're done. All 
All right, guys, we're going to temporarily install our firewall cover using two bolts. So, you have these two star washer nuts you're going to put on the inside just to hold it in place while you mark your firewall opening from the inside. All right, now we're going to go ahead and mark our firewall cover. This car already has insulation installed in it already. So what we did, because it didn't have any on the intercal, we went ahead and used 8th inch. Vintage Air offers a ton of different insulations you could use. In this area, you're only going to want to use a thickness of about a quarter inch tops because there's a lot of problems you might run into if you use anything thicker. You can use thicker insulation all over the rest of the car though. So we'll go ahead and get on to the next step. All right, now that we have our mark on our firewall cover, go ahead and remove it so we can apply your insulation to the back. Okay, as you can see, we used eighth inch insulation on this firewall cover and we've completed. So uh, we're on to our next step. All right. We're going to now move on to our heater hardline installation and our firewall bracket installation. Okay, we're going to go ahead and remove these caps. Be careful. There might be a little bit of pressure in there. Okay, we're going to properly lubricate our O-rings. Okay, now when we install these and tighten them up, we want to make sure they're facing down. Okay. Well, facing down would look like this. Once again, make sure you lubricate your O-ring. Make sure it's pointed, pointed down. Looks good to me. Go ahead and tighten it up. All right, let's go ahead and remove these bolts for your bracket. Here's your firewall bracket. Go ahead and slide these over your heater lines. So. All right, let's go ahead and get these bolts tightened up. And then what you wanna use is your quarter 20 studs. Go ahead and put these right here in these two top holes. So go ahead and install your large grommet in, in each one of these large holes and your smaller grommet in for the wiring on the smaller smaller holes. All right guys, this is your final product, what it should look like. And now we're gonna move on to the car. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start with our fresh air cap. Now if you notice, right here on the inside of it, it's gonna have a little T. That means top hole, okay? So you wanna keep it in this direction. Go ahead and grab your piece of heater hose. Bottom right, go ahead and install there and send it to your fresh air opening. Go ahead and grab another piece of heater hose, run through the top right. Same thing, there you go. OK, 
Okay. All right. Next, we're going to install our number six line to the lower left. Okay. This one moves pretty easy. Make sure you keep your lines capped. Keep contaminants out. All right, guys. We're going to go ahead and install this over the number ten line. I'm using soapy water to help it kind of slide on there. Uh, make sure you keep your lines capped. You don't want any soapy water or anything inside your, your lines. Okay, go ahead and insert your number 10. All right. Now we're going to move on to our kick panel. All right, and this is going to be the same, pretty much same positioning as far as your, your lines go. Your lower heater hose bottom left hand grommet of the kick panel cover. Hover. Okay. Your number six is going on the bottom bottom right. And the number ten, again, go ahead and pop that grommet out. Throw it on the holes, make it easy for yourself. can put our number 10 through. Give yourself some working room. Okay. There you go. On to the next step. All right, we're going to do a quick review on our wiring kit before our install. Go ahead and open your package, make sure everything's in it. What we're looking for right now is our heater control valve wiring. Okay. Go ahead and take that out. This is what we're looking for first. Notice we have a ground that'll be installed in the engine compartment area. Okay, here. Go ahead and pull your wiring apart. A little messy. And what you want to go to is you want to go to your circuit breaker right here. Now, being that we have to feed this into the engine compartment, we're going to have to do a little disassembly. Okay? Disassemble our wiring from our circuit breaker. Okay, and we'll go ahead and put the, this wire to the side. Okay, so we end up with just these wires. All right, we're gonna go ahead and insert our heater control plug right here through the small wiring grommet. Go. Make sure you get that eyelet through there also. Okay, and what we're going to want to do is leave about an inch of wiring right there. And that's just to make sure that our harness and everything plugs into it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and run this out to our other small grommet in the firewall cap. All right, go ahead and insert your plug through your wiring grommet. Okay, have your plug, your wiring out. Okay, we're going to go back into the car and install our main harness now. We're going to go ahead and grab our two ground wires, the white ones, and our one safety switch wire, the blue one, and go ahead and run it through your wiring grommet, out through your fresh air cap. All right, go ahead and pull your wires out. 
Make sure you get your red wires on both sides of your grommets, the towel side here. You want to make sure you give yourself enough wiring with your white wiring to reach your battery. Okay? We're not going to do any cuts now, but just so you know. And your blue wire is going to go to your safety switch. Go make sure that we got those red wires through that grommet on the inside. Okay, go ahead and bring your wires out. All right. Okay, and we're gonna be looking at something somewhere around this area, like this, okay? Make sure all your wires are out. All right, we'll go back inside now. All right, next we're gonna install our grommet back into where the number 10 line goes. Go ahead and get that done. And then our next step will be applying a bead of silicone around the opening of your kick panel cover. This is gonna make sure we don't get any, any air gaps or any leaks or anything that might happen in there in your vehicle. We're gonna go ahead and reinstall our kick panel over the kick panel cover. Make sure you line up your mounting holes. At this point, we're only gonna use three screws, pan head screws, Phillips, to install. I'm going to go ahead and run your wiring and your hoses through your kick panel opening. Okay, go ahead and line your, your holes up here, your mounting holes. Start with this screw. Go ahead and get that screwed in. We're also going to put a screw in this side right here. Okay, here with your last screw, we're going to take our relay and mount the relay right here. All right, now we're going to install a evaporator unit. What we're going to do is get this under the dash. You're going to put your plenum under first and just kind of lay it on the floor panel. This way we could get to our hoses and, and do our connections. You're going to start with the straight fitting on your number six. You can see right here, that's where we're going. Make sure you properly lubricate your O-ring and attach your hose. All right, we're gonna connect our heater lines now. So you wanna make sure you have your, your clamp ready. 
tool for the clamp. And go ahead and pop the top on your upper heater line. Go ahead and put your clamp around and go ahead and put it on your upper heater line. Go ahead and tighten your clamp. Okay. And we're gonna do that the same thing with the with the lower. Get my clamp. Right, we're set. All right, we're now gonna install those two studs we put in the bracket earlier. They have to go through the two top holes here in the firewall. As you can see, we put a nice two by four here just for support as we're working on this so the unit doesn't back out on us. So that's an option for you guys in case you need it. Just be sure you steer clear of the drainage plug right here because we don't want that breaking and having a problem with anything. All right, next we're gonna connect our number 10 line. Go ahead and uncap your number 10 off the unit. Go ahead and uncap your number 10 hose. I'm going to go ahead and lubricate the o-ring. And go ahead and install. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten up the number 10. Now we're going to apply press tape around all your metal ends of your hose here. All right, that's that. Now we're gonna install our dash bracket. So with the supplied U-nuts, go ahead and clip those on. Go ahead and remove your two mounting bolts from your evaporator. The evaporator bracket has to sit underneath the lip for your glove box door. might have some wires in there so be careful when you put this in go ahead and install your bolts and that pretty much will support the evaporator while we're doing the rest of the work All right, we're gonna go ahead and install our drain hose into the previously drilled 5 8 hole in the floorboard. And now we're gonna install the drain hose to the bottom of the EVAP on the drain.
All right, we're gonna set up our firewall cover now. You're gonna locate the bottom left hand hole on the cover. Go ahead and insert your quarter 20 bolt and your keeper. You're gonna use the socket over here. It makes it a lot easier to put it on. And you're set. All right, as you can see, we've already put our sealer on here. Go ahead and grab your two quarter 20 stall washer nuts. And we're gonna go ahead and install our cover on the firewall. And line up your studs. And that last bolt should fit right in there just right. Go ahead and thread these on to keep it in place. Not tight, just nice and loose. We're gonna go ahead and get the rest of the bolts and put those in. Now that you got these bolts in, we're gonna go ahead and remove these studs and the, and the nuts. Okay. Go ahead and install your quarter 20 bolts with silicone so you have no leaks or anything getting inside the car. Now that we've replaced these two, we're gonna go ahead and tighten all your bolts up. All right, now we're gonna install the quarter 20 stall washer nut on the back of the last bolt. Now, since we have hoses and lines in the way, go ahead and use an extension and a socket and get it started, and then we can tighten it up from the front. Okay, now that we've got that star washer nut started, we're gonna go ahead and level our unit. Got our trusty level here. Now for proper drainage, you're gonna wanna make sure your level is on your unit is as good as possible. Front to back and left to right. We can use the seam right here on the evaporator unit to show the level. And also down here on the bottom of the case to show front to back. Now because we've jacked up a car, we've compensated for that on the leveling. Now that we've done our leveling, we're gonna go ahead and adjust our dash bracket. Go ahead and lift it up and get it flush with the bottom of this. Go ahead and tighten your bolts. Now we're moving on to our wiring section of the installation. We're gonna have two wires. Let's talk about the tan one first. This tan wire is only for an upgraded control panel for the LED lights. In this case, we're gonna run just a stock converted control panel. So we're not gonna use that wire. So your next wire we're gonna talk about is your hot lead here on for the unit. We're gonna we extended this just to make sure we had enough to reach to the fuse box and it's gonna be on a switch power source. Go ahead and run the wire. I'm gonna go ahead and connect our heater control valve plug to the main harness. There you go. Next, we're gonna connect our blower motor. Okay, now with the rest of your wires, you can go ahead and wrap these up with some tie wraps and clean it up for yourselves and we'll move on to the next step. All right, next we're gonna connect our main harness plug to the ECU. All right, we're gonna start our defrost duct installation. Connect your defrost hose to the defrost plenum on the front of the unit and then to your defrost under the dash. Now, off the four vent plenum that you have in the front of the unit, we're gonna end up running our duct hoses for your AC lines. So you're gonna have two coming out of the center and one for the driver's side and one for the passenger side. So go ahead and get those routed and we'll move on to the next step. We're gonna start with our dual hose adapter and our number eight U-nuts. Go ahead and insert these into place, like so. Okay. 
grab the adapter bracket and put these nylon spacers on each end. Now on the center louver deflector, we're going to install these washers, the nylon washers. Go ahead and install your louver into the bezel. Next is your adapter bracket. Okay, and what you're looking for is that the spacers and the washers run against each other. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and install our dual hose plenum. Now, just to make this easy on ourselves, go ahead and install some number eight pan head screws in there to hold this together while we do the next couple of steps. In your kit, we supply you a piece of foam. We've already trimmed ours. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is cover this area right here. That'll prevent any air from escaping. Now we'll put this in the car. Okay, we're gonna start Installing with our center louver. You already have your two hoses run here. Go ahead and put them onto the back side of the dual hose adapter. All right, we're gonna go ahead and remove these two screws. Keep them close by. We're gonna need them to reinstall this into the dash. All right, now we're gonna install our passenger side and driver side louvers. Go ahead and install your hose to the back of the louver the adapter and reinstall them back into the dash. All right, we've already installed all our louvers in the vehicle, driver side, passenger side, and center. We're going to go ahead and bring in our converted control panel. Go ahead and run your wiring over to your ECU. Go ahead and bring this up into the dash area. Make sure you remember to put in your light to the back of your control panel. Go ahead and get your control panel into position. There you go. You're going to reinstall with your OEM screws. Go ahead and give it a little tight. Tighten up. Make sure your switches are moving freely. All right, we're good. Now we're gonna come over here to the ECU. Go ahead and plug in your control panel to the ECU. Nice click. We know it's installed. Go ahead and wire tie all your wiring up. Make it look neat and we'll move on to the next. All right, we're gonna move on to our fresh air cap installation, but we have to get our grommet back in here first. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this number 10 AC line back to where it gets thin on your AC fitting here on the number 10. Go ahead and install your grommet, and then you should be able to, with maybe a little help from some soapy water, go ahead and pull the line back out. Just hold on to that grommet so it doesn't come out. Okay, we'll go ahead and slide everything back. Make sure you get your wiring out. Okay, now, using the number 14 hex head sheet metal screws, we're gonna go ahead and install them into your upper and lower mounting holes. OK, 
Okay, now that we got these tightened up, we're going to go ahead and apply a bead of silicone or sealer around the edge of this fresh air cap. And we're going to move on to the hose routing and mounting of the compressor. All right, we're now going to install our number eight AC line. I'm going to go ahead and uncap down here at the condenser. Uncap your line. Go ahead and lubricate your O-ring. We'll leave that one loose for the, for the moment. Let's go ahead and uncap the other end of the line. Same, same. Go ahead and lubricate your O-ring. Uncap your compressor. Okay. Let me get that about there and go ahead and tighten everything on up. Okay, and that's going to take care of that line right there. We're going to go ahead and install our number 10 line now. Go ahead and uncap it. Okay, go ahead and lubricate your O-ring. Uncap your compressor. Go ahead and install. Give it a little tighten up. Good to go. Next, we're going to install our number 6 line to your condenser line. Go ahead and lubricate the O-ring. And install. Okay, go ahead and tighten that line up and we'll move on. All right, we're going to start our next procedure here is connecting our heater control valve. Okay, so we want this little arrow on the heater control valve to face the flow of the coolant going to your unit. So make sure that arrow is like that, going towards your unit. We're going to install our heater control valve bracket. So you can mount this bracket pretty much anywhere you want to. So we're going to have our unit going this way. So go ahead and install with our four number eight screws. Like so. Okay, go ahead and put your other two screws in, tighten everything up, and I'll meet you back over by the car. Now we're going to install our lower heater hose. Okay, we're using 5 8 heater hose all the way through to the unit. You may have a different uh, motor set up here, so if you have an LS or a big block or something, you might have to go with a, a molded hose or something a little different. Um, check with some of our sales guys or our catalog, and we offer a variety of different options for you. All right, we're going to install our heater control valve now to the upper heater hose. We already have a pre-drilled hole right here on the fender well. What you're not going to want to do is put this inside the passenger compartment, and you want to keep it away from any kind of pressurized water. So if you're going to wash your motor down and stuff right here around this fender well, we recommend to put it here. Make sure your arrow is facing your unit also. Right here, we're going to install our ground wire right here behind the heater control valve bracket. Make sure you scrape some paint. Make sure it's uh, a good ground. All right, now that we have our heater control valve mounted to the inner fender, we're going to go ahead and plug in our wiring harness. Okay. Now, when we're done, we can all tie this up with some zip ties and make it look nice. But as far as that is, we're done. We're going to go ahead and install our heater control valve to our intake line. All right, go ahead and go ahead and get your hose clamps on there. And we're all set. We're going to install our inner fender cover. As you see, I already put some sealer, silicone, whatever you want to use. And we're going to go ahead and install it right here over where the AC hoses used to come through. You're going to use the four OEM screws that came out. If you don't have them, sheet metal screws work just as well.
In your kit, you're gonna have two eight clamps, a 1032 by three quarter with a star washer nut. This is gonna be just in case you need to secure your hoses and get them out of the way of your belts or whatever you have, your moving assembly in the front. All right, as you can see, we installed our eight clamps here to keep our hoses nice and tight. We ran ahead and we got our, our zip ties in effect to make sure everything stays nice and neat together. We're gonna put back in our circuit breaker. Now, I went ahead and lengthened our wires just by a little bit. If you have to cut or trim or extend, it's not a problem. So we'll go ahead and install this back onto our circuit breaker. Get that tightened up. And we're good there. You have your leads for your negative side of your battery. We send you the eyelets. Go ahead and trim those down and get this on there. Same deal with your hot lead. And make sure these go directly to the battery. Next wiring step we're gonna do here, our light blue wire that comes from our main harness. We're gonna go ahead and run that down these lines, zip tie it down. And we're gonna run it down here on the number eight line going through and underneath your core support up to your safety switch. You're gonna have to either cut a trim and go ahead and put a spade connector on there so you can plug it into your safety switch. Your next wiring is gonna be your compressor lead. This is gonna run down also your number eight hose to your safety switch. Go ahead and connect your bullet. Okay, we're gonna move over here. Now, the way I ran our wires is on the number eight, and I also used some zip ties here on our condenser bracket to go ahead and keep our wires nice and neat. So we'll go ahead and zip tie those down, and then we're gonna make our connection here on our dryer, on our safety switch. We're gonna go ahead and use your number eight unit, place it on the last hole here on the lower half of your glove box. Just like that. Now install it into the dash. It should slip underneath the lip right here of your mounting holes. I'm going to go ahead and use two number eight by half screws on each side right here and right here. Go ahead and get those installed. All right, now we're going to use our 1032 machine screws and these three holes right here to get the glove box together. All right, now we're gonna use two more number eight by half screws here at the upper part of the glove box. All right, next, we're gonna install our glove box door. Now make sure when you put these three screws in, they go down to the lower dash bracket into the U-nuts that were in the dash bracket. Go ahead and get that installed. All right, let's go ahead and install your glove box light. This should work. All right, now that you're done with your installation, you're gonna have these caps left over. Go ahead and throw them in your toolbox, in a drawer somewhere, just keep them for later, just in case you ever wanna service your unit. You know, you wanna keep contaminants out, so go ahead and keep those and cap off your lines if you have to. 
All right, we went ahead and cleaned up all our hoses, our wiring, our lines. What you want to keep separate are your heater lines and your AC lines. We added these 280 clamps included in your kit. You can put them where you need to. Every application might be different. So go ahead and clean up the way you need to. Our wiring, we went ahead and put some wire loom on our wires to hide it a little bit better. You can get that at your local parts house. All right, that's going to conclude our installation on the 67 Camaro. Be safe. Enjoy your install. Enjoy the nice coolness of our system. See you on the next video.